Today's video is going to be an advanced TFT guide as to how to play the Aurelian Soul Legend, not just Dragon King. I feel like that's a very, very important distinction to make because a lot of players, including myself up until about a couple days ago, was just sort of like, oh, you just play a soul Dragon King, that's it. That was a heuristic that you've built and you never touched it because it's so first or eighth and you were like, I don't want to tilt out of my mind, I'm just going to play Ord. Um, turns out, a soul actually has a bit more nuance to it and there's actually sort of two approaches when it comes to ASOL, not just Dragon King. Now, if you don't know about anything about Dragon King, Dragon King is this idea that you fast nine and then you just play into a Bill Gates board as soon as possible. Froden actually made a fantastic guide as to how to play Dragon King and we will touch a little bit about the same points that he does in this video as well. But if you've never seen this video, I highly go recommend watching it. I mean, it has 150,000 views. It's very likely you've seen this video before my video. But there's a lot more to a soul than just fast dining and today i wanted to expand a little bit more about it and how to actually approach aurelian soul the legend now i was not aware of this and i need to give a shout out because this is very important i was not aware of the strategy at all and as to how to actually approach aurelian soul until my buddy rec told me about it now rec is a consistently very high lp challenger player and in fact um he's actually the guy that coached me during set eight and he also um does not stream for whatever reason. I'm actually only in contact with this guy because my roommate happens to be friends with this guy IRL. It just, just, it's a small world, it's crazy. But this guy, he's actually so fucking good at TFT. And actually, he is currently actually playing right now for uh, Shirima Cup uh, for the screenshots. But also, he actually peaked rank two of North America, which is absolutely fucking insane. It's a really small world. Um, Really, really nice guy. Uh, shout out to him because he, without him, I would not have known this at all. It, it was just like a thing that just came up while we were just talking about TFT. Um, which is really, really cool. So again, shout out to him. I would not know anything about this. And if you go into his match history at all, I know he's not having a great day. He's not having a good day right now. I know he's tilting a little bit. <laughs> um, but you can see it in his match history. He's actually nothing but a soul. So anyways, let's talk about a soul and how to approach it. So first off, a soul, the, le the augments, right? Stage two, one, cutting corners, patient study level up. Stage three is all the different types of knowledge downloads. And stage four is it pays to learn. Now, obviously I am going to take what David said, but I'm also going to put my, a little bit of my own take into here as well. Um, so not everything may be, he might not agree with everything if he watches this video. If that's not the case, I hope he comments on the video or he just lets me know. Um, you know me, just let me know on Discord, bro. <laughs> um, but let's just talk about uh, what I've learned from him. Uh, basically, you never really want to take cutting corners ever. This augment kind of sucks right now. Uh, maybe if it gets buffed in the future, I don't know. I actually haven't seen the rundown yet. I'm going to be reacting to it tomorrow on stream. So if you want to go check out my stream, uh, come by then. But uh, I mean, if it gets buffed, cool. If not, I mean, okay, just don't take it. Uh, patient study is actually very takeable. Um, patient study basically allows you to play into what I believe is sort of play style, which is just fast eight. Um, and by p taking patient study, you're basically able to fast eight most games. And in a sort of, ever since the XP changes, level eight has sort of felt a bit like a luxury. Nowadays, people have sort of adjusted and they feel a little better about playing into it. And especially into realms that have a lot of econ, like shoved into the lobby, such as Glass Industries, Yorta Portals, Scuttle Puddle, all this stuff. Um, level eight doesn't feel as difficult to hit. But nonetheless, when you do have those realms where you don't have that option, patient study is actually really, really nice. And it feels really, really good. And even in those realms with gold, you just get to hit it even faster. Um, level up, you can take it. You don't have to take it, but you can take it depending on your game plan. Now, knowledge download, this is where sort of the game plan happens. There's, there's two, not schools of thoughts. They're both the same thought, but they got two branches, if you will. You'll understand what I mean when I explain this a little bit better. Um, knowledge download, you never really want to take knowledge download. Now, according to Rec, he says you should never take it ever. He actually likes saying, don't take these augments and don't take these top augments ever. And instead, what you should do is just, just take combat augments instead for your 3-2 and 4-2. And that's way better because you'll fast it and you'll play into a 4 sork board instead of the Bill Gates board. Now, I will say this though. I don't fully agree. I think there are going to be times where you can actually take knowledge download and take it pace to learn. And instead, you're actually going to play into the strategy everybody knows, which is Dragon King. So I actually think you have two options here. I think you have the Force Work option, but I also think you have the Dragon King option depending on the realm, depending on the direction that your game is headed. Now, obviously, depending on the realm, like for example, Jace's Workshop, it's very easy to Dragon King and go Fast 9, but the more people that play Aesol, the worse the strategy becomes because more people are trying to play Fast 9, trying to play RE2 Bava 2 ASAP, and that becomes a bit of a problem. Obviously, it's called Dragon 
king for a reason. There can only be one king, so um, it really does kind of feel like first or eighth. It's usually if there's multiple ace players in the lobby, only one of them will win out if everybody's trying to play Dragon King. Um, let's talk about real quick Four Sword because this is the variation that sort of was news to me. I always thought Four Sword was bad, and actually, I believe in my meta analysis video that I did about a week ago, I did not, I was not a believer of Four Sword. I actually didn't think it was very good. I thought it was Six Sword or bust. Turns out Force Orc is actually a lot more stable than I had anticipated. And this is sort of the ideal level 8 board. Again, we are trying to take Patient Study. We are trying to lose streak in the early game, assuming that it's a gold augment, right? Because usually um, gold is the most often that you'll be seeing here. So Force Orc is sort of, this is sort of almost the default that you'll normally play, um, depending on the game, right? Now, the way that this works is that normally your early game, you are playing around 3 Void. It's strong enough that you are able to usually kill a unit or two, um, but sometimes you won't be able to, it just is what it is, but you want to try to kill as many units as you can without winning. That's the whole goal of patient study. I should probably put the augment here just so that it looks a little bit more, um, a little bit more concise, if you will, you know? Um, but yeah, ideally Void is the best opener because basically, um, if you're not familiar with this already, Void is great because you're usually trying to play AP and lean AP whenever you're trying to run A Soul. A Soul is really not an AD line. If you can drop a lot of AD components, don't don't try to play into this line. Uh, for obvious reasons, we're playing into Sorcerers. We're trying to play into Ari here, but ideally, you are trying to play into AP and you try to lean AP as much as you can. Um, for those of you who don't know, again, for, Void is great for this AP line because one Malzahar is a sorcerer, but also the line plays out itself. This Cho'Gath eventually becomes a Vel'Koz. Uh, you eventually take into Tarek here for four Sorkit, which is really nice. This Orianna eventually becomes a Swain. And then you can even look at this stuff like Teemo here to like cap out throughout the mid game. And then level seven hits. And then maybe you can just, you know, you keep trying to find different ways. Maybe you find the Lux in here eventually. And then you find the J4 along the way. And suddenly your board is slowly, slowly, slowly eventually becomes this four sort board that is over in this tab right over here now obviously this board and this board that i just showed you are a little different this is level seven this is level eight the only difference is that this cast in eventually becomes a shen if i can find it uh fast enough here we go alphabetical order eventually becomes a shen and then eventually you do want to find the karma here uh for the eventual invokers and then you want this Vel'Koz to eventually become ari that's how we arrive at this four sort variation now again this board is surprisingly incredibly stable, but I will say this though, it does rely on you hitting RE1 at a certain point at level eight. Now rolling at level eight for a single legendary may sound kind of bad, but the overall board here is still generically very cheap to build. And it's very easy to hit everything here at level eight. The only, the only issue becomes RE. Right, but Ari right now, and again, this board only works because Ari is such a strong unit, even at one start. And what this board actually, if you manage to hit this board, you will actually be able to streak pretty hard for the most part. It's a very difficult board for most boards to be because Lux 2 is actually such a strong unit. Four Sork is enough damage to pump out, and Ari alone is just such a strong unit. We will see this later on in the full VOD. Um, but you'll see that this RE1 is pumping out a lot of damage. Now, if you do low roll, there aren't a lot of alternative outs though. I will say this board is very reliant on finding the RE. Um, if you don't happen to find it, you are kind of stuck with this Lux 2 carry with the Vel'Koz 2, and that's just kind of the board. You can try to flex into like an Azir line with Azir Lux here, and you can also try to flex into stuff like even Gwen if you absolutely need to, maybe even Kai'Sa depending on your itemization. It's not great, but sometimes that's just what you're going to be given. But again, you really, it's kind of hard to miss a single Ari. One Ari. It does happen. But it's a little hard to miss, I'm not going to lie. Um, most of the times when I've played this stuff, I'm more often than not able to find at least one Ari, because again, we're rolling on eight. So it's not the most difficult thing in the world. In terms of itemization, real quick, we will talk about this. Lux, you usually only have two items. It's a little difficult to find Lux itemizations just through the stats here because you're not usually having three items on the Lux here. Um, it's usually a random radiant item, so it's a little difficult to isolate the stats here. Um, but you will see DFG popping up pretty often. If you find DFG, great, it's her best item. She's an incredibly great shrink, te shrink tether? Tank Shredder. Whoa, I got the fucking constants mixed up. Um, really great tank shredder. You want this DFG to be positioned in front of the opponent's main tank. Let's say, for example, they have a Sejuani 2 on their board. You want, for example, if Sejuani 2 is in the middle, Lux in the middle. This way it targets the Sejuani. Sejuani's on the side, Lux on the side. You want this to sort of focus down the tank as much as you can. It's a really, really powerful strength uh, destroyer. Uh, I will say this though, you also want to make sure you have some level of shred on your board for very obvious reasons. You do want the shred probably not on your shred, sh 
Shen. Your Shen, but rather on the Swain here. I personally like Swain. You might have noticed today's stream, if you came by, I was doing some sort of positioning like this. Um, the more I think about it, the more this is ass. You should just do this. Um, my theory for this was just that you kept your Swain alive for a little bit longer. Um, that's just horseshit. Just put it here. Uh, it gets to shred multiple units, especially if your opponent has um, units within the second row. But I mean, if your opponent only has units in the first row, then I guess this is fine. But you can also do this. That's fine as well. I guess it depends on the opponent's uh, positioning. Um, you do want three item full tank, ideally. So like your tank should, your main tank, which is usually Shen 2, does not want to be having a, the shred armor item on them. That's just not great practice. You do want something like looking, I don't know, like this, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not Sunfire, it's by Gargoyle. So you get the idea though, right? But again, Lux Atomization is here. You want two items on here. And she's basically holding your items until you find the RE1. Um, now, normally, when you think about um, a legendary one star, it shouldn't be stronger than a two star three cost. Theoretically speaking, this costs nine gold to make, this t costs five gold to make. Um, theoretically, it really shouldn't be, but right now, Ari's just a little overtuned, um, as you may or may not have known. So, this unit is just fine as a one star and actually pumps out way, way more than the Velkos ever could. So, we do want blue buff Archangels on Ari. Yes, even though you have Ionia in here, blue buff is still Biss. Um, you can go with Gunblade. You can put Gunblade on Lux. I personally like Gunblade on Lux the most. This basically just gets the heal for your team. And you're, you know, you're having a really good time. I will say this though, if you manage to do a Dragon King instead, you could still potentially roll on eight and then try to play um, this board and then use this board as a crutch to eventually pivot into the Bill Gates board. And this is actually what you'll see me doing today in today's VOD. Um, I know it's a bit of a spoiler, but ideally the Bill Gates board, I mean, we can briefly go over it. You do want to keep Ionia in your board. So Shen 2, Karma 2, these are very important units. You want to keep an eye out for these units whenever you can. You do want to hold on to them whenever you're playing Ari because this gives you the Ionia plus uh, the Invoker. It's a really good synergy that to, just to have on your board and it's worth holding on to. It's better than just testing and like, like unlimited legendaries because RE2 uh, really, really likes her Ionia buff. You have two approaches when it comes to Dragon King. You can either prioritize um, making Belveth items instead, and then you can try to Dragon King into a Belveth 2. RE2 is definitely way more consistent than Belveth 2 in my personal opinion. But nonetheless, I think itemizing for the RE2 is better and then trying to itemize your Lux second so that you can play this crutch board instead and then slowly pivot into the Bill Gates board. I think that's the better way to approach it. You still end up going fast nine, but instead of immediately teching onto like everything you can here with the legendaries, you try to tech into basically this entire board minus Heimerdinger because he's very expensive. Once you get most of this online, um, Aatrox is actually kind of, I mean, this is also technically, yeah. I mean, once you have like this core sort of figured out, um, you could just do Force Sork instead and then, or maybe even just Demacia in the meantime, and then try to, you know, try to play around the Lux item here with the Radiant item. But I mean, there's multiple ways of playing this board, but typically the, the, the sort of foundation of this core is RA2, Velvet 2. You get the idea. And then everything else you tech on after Heimerdinger, obviously you want on your board. It's the best five cost in the game, but it's just, it's super expensive. But anyways, that basically covers it for the four sort variation for this sort of Bill Gates board transition. Um, I'm going to, we're going to go transition over into the VOD now so you can get to see this in action. And I hope you guys learned something. I, I'll see you guys later. Take care and happy climbing. I was actually going to make a video about um, how to capitalize on luck. And I was actually going to quote the blue lock thing in the manga. Um, but... That was before it was adapted into the anime version. I was like, I don't know if I really want to do this. This was back during set seven, where I was like, I was like, no, set seven? It might've been set eight when I was thinking about doing this. But it was a while back. It was definitely not this set though, that's for sure. I remember I was at a cafe thinking about the script. I had the script for the video and then I wasn't like super sold on it because I didn't really know exactly how to, uh, how to really translate it fully into TFT. And yeah. Like, should you always position yourself in a spot to be high rolled? No, but like, like was, but like the thing is like me picking up RE2 off that carousel or picking up the RE off the carousel so that I can maybe have a chance to hit RE2, right? Like that's like positioning yourself for luck, right? But is that like a skill? Like it's hard to say, like it, that might not be the correct call sometimes, you know? If you're playing an attorney, you're playing for placements, it's very likely that isn't the, the correct call. You're supposed to go for something else, like the safer option. I don't think it's a skill necessarily. I think it's more of a play style. Do you have a Nox to start? Um with these items it's kind of waste i mean i'm also playing a really expensive board for two for one four realistically i should play double poppy and cassiopeia here right what are the odds is a fucking gold start though i mean it's probably not not noxus unless i get like total domination here
only one other, no, two level up players. That no, was just one. It's just one. Oh, dude, if I knew this was my shop. If I knew this was my shop, I actually would have wanted to really try a different line. Um, I've talked about this on stream before, but there's this uh, Samira 3, Cassiopeia 3 line, and you and then you just play into Noxus. I don't know how good it is, to be honest, bro. Let's get the golden ticket. I'm like really scared of trying it. But if I knew I had Cassiopeia 2 in my shop, I think I actually would have tried to run it. It's a really cool line. But there's also only one other like level up player, so... Like, am I really not gonna just play level up? It's not very good, really. I've seen it like hard when out lobbies. I know the official discords are full of trolls, but I have heard whispers of AP Samira 3. AP Samira 3? I mean, also, I haven't seen a Samira, so maybe I was right not to not to try that line. I think I'm just like very biased towards it because I really want to try it. Oh, to reduce their armor? That's so stupid. That has to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There's no way that's good. No, I want to play to your outs is definitely a skill. Oh no, yeah, for certain. Two stars, Samira, easy carry early game. Yeah, so I mean that's why I was kind of like not opposed to the idea of playing it, but I don't know, it's hard to say. My my items aren't very good for it either, because I don't even know if you're supposed to itemize the Samira. I think you're I think you're supposed to. But I I don't know who you're supposed to itemize. Are you supposed to itemize Cassiopeia? Are you supposed to itemize like a Samira? Yeah, it's it's hard to say. So I didn't really want to play it. You, I think you need like a crazy good opener for that line. Uh, I want to make twenty. I mean, I can sell this for sure. That means weaker, but I gotta make 20. I should just sell these two. I mean, I'm giving up Poppy Pair though, probably not. This karma is really expensive. The odds of me keeping this karma on my board is really low. I can't really slam anything either, which kind of sucks. Like, Child Slam is okay, but using up a tier, this could be Spark. Like, the components are way too good. I don't know if we're playing Dragon. I think we're playing Force Orc though. Like if I was like hard win if I had like really decent HP early game, I'd I'm down for Dragon King, but I don't think that's the case. Where's the other level up guy? Is he down here? Oh, he actually has decent HP. Three void, two Sork. Yeah. Nice. So I'll make 30. Make 30, make 40. Honestly, I'm kinda of down. I mean, I'm probably gonna have to roll a little bit on seven or six, rather, just to just to stabilize a little bit. Uh, you're telling me this guy just naturals casted in two with a void start and a mouse too? Like what? This has to be the most insane opener for level up. I'm not killing jack shit. Also, I, I mean, it's, isn't it due to my positioning though? To be fair, don't I kill at least like the remora if I position right? Thirty-three. Like, isn't this guy just going turbo not, turbo first? He can actually dragon king. I think I'm stuck at level eight. I mean, maybe not though. Maybe, maybe I'm overreacting. So why am I not positioning like properly, Flo? I mean, there's no way I'm winning against anybody, right? Are you playing in TCQ? I don't think I am, dude. The people who are playing in TCQ are like super high elo, and I'm just like, oh shit. I didn't realize TCQ was such a high elo thing. I thought it was just like a four fun land event, and then I saw the fucking player list, and I was like, holy shit. There's like Dpay, Spicy Appies, Fossil Skills, like a bunch of like really like like consistently like thousand LP challenger players in this tournament, and I'm just like, oh, then there's me. <laughs> I would have liked to play it in it, but um, it's just everybody's really, really strong. There's no reason for them to pick me over anybody else. Lo, how me and my low elo friends signed up for the event. I mean, I don't think there's any harm in signing up. You never know, but I signed up as well. But I didn't realize again it, it was a lot higher elo. Cause I think I think originally it was supposed to be like a uh, like oh like any elo is like there's no elo rank restriction. Yay! And then I looked at the the player list and I was like, yes, there is. <laughs> I was like I was like shit. Everyone's fucking good. But yeah. I just need to get to the point where I'm like consistently seeing those players in my lobbies. It was like that for the beginning of the set, and now ever since I've been low masters, it's just never been the same. Belt. ZZ Rot. I mean, surely I don't have to slam ZZ Rot here, right? That'd be really cool. I would like to not do that. No orb. Wait, my board is this weak? Huh. Blue buff, that's pretty good. Any invokers? Am 
man, his positioning sucks. It's not the worst. But I mean, if I played someone like this, it's the worst. Or rather, I guess it's just unideal. I was positioning for the people on the left side, but oh well. I mean, actually, I might win. I don't know how I feel about that. Tiniest Titan. At 3-2 and team play. Knowledge download gain 36 XP. There's level 8, 3, 5. Like, this is my board. Like, holy shit, this is ass. This has to be the fakest board of all time. This is terrible. 3 Bastion, 3 Sork. I'm not even rolling here because I'm trying to fast 8. Also, my other options were pretty bad. Social distancing is okay, but I'm, I have a Taric. And I kind of want my frontline to clump. So it's like not even that good. What's this guy doing? No Radiant Relics. I actually might just be Dragon King this game. I don't know. We'll see. These losses, I mean, I've actually been winning fights, which is kind of insane. But I think I, I fought the two weakest players in the lobby, just, right? Aren't I about to like eat shit? Like, I'm down here with these guys. Like, I, I think we're just getting really lucky here. Like, aren't I getting 10 would by this guy? I have Rek'Sai for fun. Holy fuck. Oh, God send help. 52. What If I wait until 4-2, how much HP do I have? 3, 5, 3, 6, 4, 1. I'm down to like 20 HP. That's actually not even that bad. It's like low-key, it's, it's like playable. Here, it's on J4, but I can't pick it up. Okay, suck my ass. Uh, Shiver, Shiver, Shiver. I have no Ari items, I have a blue buff. Uh oh, uh oh. Not looking too hot. Not looking too hot. I have Demacia. Yordles. <laughs> this is shit! This is terrible! This isn't a laughing matter. I'm playing three Yordles. Oh god. I mean, this J. I mean, we actually killed a decent amount here. Four unit? I'm already down. I mean, I'm down to kill more, but I mean, how do we get through this thing? Fucking Great Wall of China over here. Holy fuck. Dead Eye Taric with Eternal Winter. 41? Okay, that's actually a pretty good loss. The only problem is that the units are kind of expensive. Wait, isn't Yodel's fake as hell? The strategist probably. Three Bastion. Wait, fuck this guy. Wait, this is actually like some semblance of a real board. Like, low-key. It's getting there. Like, th this doesn't look like terrible. Now this just looks like kind of bad. Like, before it was vomitrocious. As uh, DW Reed would say. But now this is uh, looking a little acceptable. Please tell me I kill one unit. Holy fuck. Please, 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 please. It rolled Radiant Decal. What am I supposed to do here? Oh, God. Yo, Griffin, thanks for the Prime, bro. How viable is Scaler right now? Pretty viable. Um, Definitely playable. Also, I'm 27 HP, bro. Holy shit. Should we just 4... I can't even 4 1. I have to 4 2 it. I'm going to be like 10 HP. Should we roll a little bit on 8? Just like some upgrade so I don't take like infinite damage. 27. Like, if I'm above 20 HP, I'm chill with it. But if I'm 10 HP, it's actually super fucked. And there's no coming back. Oh, Senna? Like two Sork? Okay, fuck out of here. This is probably fine. Just play Felios for one turn. I'm like Loki kind of down. How bad are my matchups? Oh, bad. Oh. Oh. Alright, fuck it. First or eighth? I'm kind of down. Wait, I don't have any damage items. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nice, nice. Three unit loss. That's pretty good. 17. Okay, honestly, I'll take it. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. You can stay. Four. Sante two. Not really. We have Lux two. Uh, Kaini Demacia. What am I missing? 
Swain. Have I not seen a Swain this whole game? Oh, there it is. I mean, this seems pretty acceptable for now. It's not a terribly good pivot, but it's not terribly bad either. Do I have Terra 2? No. I'm repaired. <clears throat> I need Ari 2. Where's the other guy? Level 9 as well? Okay, we're gonna have to roll a little faster then. Roll to like 10, I guess. Yeah, I have to play Karma 2. Keep this paired. I don't know if I really want this. Uh, I guess it's fine for now. I mean, I think I have to like settle with this board for now and then. Um, Look for the shit later. Also, this is Belveth ever going on my board? Probably not. Like, Belveth 2 is good, but I don't have any items for her, right? I don't have any items for anybody. Where are my components? I overrolled. I shouldn't be under 10 here. Like, I haven't seen a hybrid in this whole game. Rod's on a one cost. I don't think I have a choice. Like, belt's on a two cost. Is that any better? Not really. You do like five components here? Yeah, I'm doing like six components here. So, if I can make the four, uh, five, one, I'm chilling. Or four, seven, even. If I find Belveth two, I play Belveth two. I played over the Scion, but I was scared about selling this pair for now. I mean, who beats my board realistically? Above a two unitemized for fun. I don't think anybody beats my board right now. Donkey for RE2? Probably not. If I can save like some semblance of econ, I probably should here. I'm also low key down to sell the Scion. Like anybody beating my board at this stage is pretty unlikely. Like if I was a really good player, I would be like, I'm gonna stay above 20 here. But uh, I got I got cold feet. Oh, man. I hate how nowadays the default is that you actually have to club your front line because if you don't, you end up in this weird position where like you might actually just get action. You just lose because of a two star three cost. This Belveth has done nothing. I mean, he has no items, like. Yeah, but you know. In a perfect world, I drop these two and I play Scion two and like Heimer two. And I'll probably drop this as well. I don't really have the econ for that right now. What's this guy losing? What, what happened here? Uh, rod is good. Another guard breaker. Gargoyles. Holy fuck. Sorry, too. Zon rise. Fuck out of here. Hello? No more Scions? Seems good to me. Also, I was looking for Swain 2, Tarek 2, surprisingly enough. We should be fine. Timers are so expensive though. Pretty sure it's BT Belveth, Guardbreaker, Ari, and JG for Lux. Uh, 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 uh. BT Belveth, Guardbreaker, Ari, JG for Lux. Uh, I don't know if I agree. I really value uh, a uh, Gunblade on Lux.
Like, she's just a utility unit, right? I think, I think Gunblade on Lux is too valuable. Because it, not only does he heal my Ari, but also heals my Belveth. And I can always go for a Belveth item on Carousel later. Belveth has enough healing on Empress, Gunblade Lux too. Yeah, I mean, obviously you need BT eventually. BT or like, RFC or whatever, but... Right now I think we're chilling. Also, if you go level 10, I feel like level 10's kind of fake. Like, don't I just want to play like 2-star legendaries first and then go to level 10? I have to keep this on my board, so it's probably Cassante 2 over this, and it's probably just saw this. So I guess it was Cassante 2, but just not at the time, right? Nice. Okay, this should be a pretty free dub. What you said is also extremely good, just fun to see what other players prefer and stuff. Yeah. I think, um... I think you really can't underestimate Gunblade. It's actually just way too good. Also, I know I'm griefing my Econ holding these Heimers, but... Eventually, I dropped down to two Sork, right? No Tarek, no Swain. Are you pair? Ionia spat. Oh! I gotta drop Karma for free? Sounds good to me! I fuck a frontline item, who needs that shit? Show how much healing Gumblade did. Not a lot. But this Lux also has like no items, so. Is what it is. Uh, well, now I can play this. I can roll for some mods. Rise. Sunrise, fuck out of here. Okay, well we have. Okay. Yeah. Do I want shrink? Not particular. Actually, yeah. My only shred's ionic. I'm gonna roll on this. Someone like you. Hey, can I enjoy your YouTube comments so much to drop by to say hi? Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for dropping by. Do we buy the Xante and the Scion? I'm like Loki kind of down. Okay, the thing is, I know it looks like Gumblade's doing no healing, but if I had JG, this Lux heals infinite. You know what I mean? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna hold it. Fuck it. God damn it. Sure. Eventually, it's drop, drop. No, I need Sorix. Who's the third one? Oh. An in, in, plus one. I have this really bad habit of assuming my opponent will not reposition. I was gonna move my Lux over to this side, so it could be on top of the Sejuani here, but all good. But, like, what is this board? He's there he won. Like, what? Holds for fun, why not? But I have three open slot right now. I mean, I might fucking end the game with this board. Loki. Like, drop one. So, one, two, three. Three open slot. And then we play Cassante, Scion, plus one. It's probably. Who's a plus one? Rise? For Invoker? Ah, uh, nah, but it only gives Shred, right? It's not very good. It might just be a. It might be second Scion. Yeah, backline CC disruption is kind of nutty here. I mean, level 10 is so fake. I know. How are we so far? Any Lux items? No. Why don't you move it? Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. At least J4 ulti, right? Gets out of the way for Cassante. I mean, is it even close? Not really. I'm not from the FF, agreed? I'm a what? Oh, nice. GG's! Hangover diff agreed.